Hi, my name is Scott, the Miniature Maniac, and in this video, we discuss my voyage to the biggest miniature painting convention in the world. What up, mini family? The convention I'm talking about is, of course, Adepticon. Well, I'm all ready to start going to Adepticon, and I went outside, started packing my car, and it is snowing. It is like March 23rd, hashtag Minnesota. Here I come, John. Hopefully I don't crash and die in this snow. <laughs> Adepticon happens mostly every year, and I always travel down there with my buddies John and Josh, or as John calls them on the podcast. Good friend Joshy, sexy teeth Joshy. Is that a new one? I didn't get in a crash, but I did run into this guy. Oh! Oh, who's a good puppy? Who's a good boy? Has anyone in the wild called you sexy teeth Joshy? Not yet. I'm Deep. expecting it right there. Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah. So John just posted about us going to Adepticon and there's a glorious comment in here. Someone referred to Josh as sexy teeth Joshy. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> a great quest that is the five hour drive from Minnesota to Illinois requires great fuel. And what better fuel than of course, chicken tendies. It fell to John's responsibility to find where we could find chicken tenders in Moston, Wisconsin, and he found Dairy Island. I don't think a greater word exists to describe the decor of this restaurant better than eclectic. There were gumbo machines, slot machines, the same food priced multiple times throughout the eons of Dairy Island's existence, and of course, makeup? Also, unfortunately for John, there was no bathroom. Okay, it's story time with John right now. I had to pee really bad when we got here, and there's no, there's no bathroom here. But outside, there's this little blue shed. And so I decided I was gonna go behind the blue shed and pee. So I did. And I was halfway through my pee, and I looked over my shoulder, and there's a trailer park. <laughs> right there. And there's a lady. <laughs> oh no, it's a lady! Standing outside her trailer, with the baby in her arms, wearing only a diaper, and she's staring right at me. But fortunately, before too long, we were back on the road and playing our own version of mini painting car trivia. Time for a car trivia game. John's gonna read out the name of a mini painting class and I have to guess who the instructor is. The very first one is kind of an easy one, or is it? Loaded brush in three practical applications. Because he said it was easy, my first guess is that it is, oh God. Ben comments, but he made it seem like it wasn't easy, so I'm gonna guess Matt Sexwish. Correct, your answer is Matt Sexwish. Ah! Okay, it's John's turn. Diorama and Ambiance 101. This is a US painter that emphasizes on ambiance and base building. What do you got? Chris Suri. <laughs> Man, that was a good one. And that concludes this episode of Car Trivia. And then eventually, we reached the promised land. <laughs>
Before going too much further, let's hear a brief word from our sponsor. One of my other hobbies in life is cooking, which is why I'm excited to work with this video's sponsor, HelloFresh. Get great seasonal recipes and fresh pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door with America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh makes cooking at home super simple. I always try to minimize the amount of decisions I have to make in a day, and what I'm eating is a lot to think about week after week. You need to make sure your ingredients are used efficiently between various recipes, you plan your meals so your fresh ingredients are used before they go bad after shopping, and you need to make sure you have time to make the meals you plan for. With HelloFresh, all of those choices are eliminated and it saves me a lot of time. My wife and I made the apricot sumac chicken recipe and I got to cook with sumac, apricot, and bulgur for the first time and it was a lot of fun. A couple of recipes I got have me experimenting with new ingredients and as a foodie I really enjoyed that. I was also pretty impressed that the cooking instructions include a lot of best practices so following HelloFresh recipes could build a lot of confidence in the kitchen. Some recipes come as vegetarian but have additional add-ons for various proteins so you can mix and match to your heart's content. The proof is in the pudding, or in this case the bulgur, and the meal we made tasted great and was perfect for a weeknight meal. Use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use code POGMINIAC16 for up to 16 free meals plus 3 surprise gifts across 6 HelloFresh boxes plus free shipping. Alright, back to my Akon adventure. We got our hotel room, now we gotta get our luggage up there. We got fudge from Uranus. That too. Shout out to Chris for the gift. We got it all loaded even! Josh, are you angry? No. <laughs> we had some business to deal with on day one. Okay, here's the situation. I didn't pay anything for Golden Demon, so I brought some stuff that I painted in the last eight years, and now Vince and Goobs and Sexy Teeth Joshi are gonna pick which one is the best, and I'm gonna enter it in and win nothing. Hell yeah. Yeah, dude, look real quizzical, yeah. <laughs> you love that piece, you love it. Show me you love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> During this process, people kept showing up, so it turned into a bit of a party. Throwing a couple of drinks, and... And yes, of course, we harassed the giant space rain statue. Are you kidding me? I learned a lot of really cool, fun things at Dipicon this year, and I want to share them all with you. So let's get started with dice. The mark of a great die is that it's filled solidly and the geometry of the die itself is virtually perfect. Voids on the inside is how you get an accurate dice. Additionally, if you're using fragile dice or dice you really care about, consider using a dice tray with soft sides. This way, when your fancy schmancy dice hit the side of the box, they don't chip and break, messing up their shape and eventually their accuracy. <laughs> I was closely inspecting the work of Alex LeHoulier, and while I was doing that, one of my friends mentioned that he painted on top of his decals, which I think is a perfect solution to making them look less flat and more lively. I'll definitely be trying that out next time I have to use decals, and you should give it a shot too. As many painters, we're pretty good at painting inside the lines, and this gives us the opportunity to do that while also looking like a really awesome tiny 2D illustration. Steam Forge booth, right, right? Conspiracy though. That's a guild ball character, it's coming back! One late night at Fort Wapple, the painting area at Adepticon, I was chatting with Eric from Eric's Hobby Workshop, a great terrain channel here on YouTube. He introduced me to a website that saved digital versions of every GW product catalog to ever exist, which is a kit basher slash old hammer lover's dream come true. I'll have it linked in the description below. Fun fact about Eric, that man is constantly on the hunt for snacks, so hide your Oreos, hide your Doritos, because that Canadian is eating all of your junk food otherwise. Josh. Yeah. Where are your plates, bro? Uh, it is this Tate's chocolate chip cookie container. <laughs> <laughs> A product I was familiar with going into Adepticon was Seocast, a material used to produce miniatures that combines the best part about plastic injection molding with the best part of pewter and resin spin casting, creating a product that is cheap to manufacture, easy to produce, creates durable miniatures, and also is very fast. The only downside that I was familiar with with this product was that the material was a little bit rubbery, meaning that it was hard to clean. Think Simon's plastics. However, the guys at the show showed me a new type of seal cast called seal cast hard that is significantly easier to file and scrape than the other stuff. It isn't as buttery smooth as resin or plastic when it comes to cleanup, but I would pick a seal cast model for a painting competition because I don't think the material would get in the way of the finish of the product if that means anything to you. Side note, if you're a mid-range company looking to invest in Seocast, it's worth mentioning that while this product has many positives, just like an airbrush, it takes some practice to know how to use and maintain the machine for the best results. You can't replace your super skilled resin casting team with one of these machines. Eric, where do you get the inspiration for your terrain? 
I don't know, man. Where do you get your ideas? <laughs> Got him. Yeah, but you can't put it back on me, dude. <laughs> Lastly, while I was analyzing some of the British paint jobs in the Golden Demon cases, I started to notice a trend. While looking at Andy Wardle's Eldar piece, I started to notice really soft and subtle contrast on his cape that I then also noticed on Robin McLeod's pieces and James Cordwell's, all fantastic painters and humans for what it's worth. Heck, you can even see very subtle contrast on GW box art very often, and I had a bit of a come to Jesus moment. Do you always need nutty contrast? <laughs> How will hobbyists on Reddit ever give feedback? Oh God, it hurts! Have I been lying to people my whole career? Jesus, take the wheel! To attempt to unpack what's going on here, you can use a lack of contrast, wait for it, as a form of contrast. <laughs> some items on your miniatures are going to have really huge swings and blends, and some won't. The more contrasted portions will likely draw more attention and look even better contrasted against the non-contrasted parts. I may be getting confused. But also, there's an incredible softness going on here that I don't fully understand and will be looking into further. For now, remember that there are no rules in art and with the skillful hand, one can make any approach look fantastic. The last day of Adepticon was finally upon us and it was time to pack up and leave. Can we do it all in one trip? Let's find out. Okay, we got Jake the intern on the job. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa, dude. Straighten her out. <laughs> Way less exciting than I thought it would be. But the very last thing you always do at Adepticon is attend the painting award ceremony. This year it was Golden Demon, and man, was it way fuller than Crystal Brush ever was. Without any further ado, our Slayer Sword winner for 2022, Gavin Dorsey. Yeah! yeah! We gotta wait, we gotta wait. It happened, it fucking happened, bro. <laughs> Literally, whenever I watch that clip, I smile. It's kind of a weird feeling to have friends involved in the competition who didn't win anything. You kind of have to lament with them while also celebrating your other friends who did win trophies. This year, I didn't have any real skin in the game, as it were, so I didn't walk into that room with any expectation of winning. What that allowed me to do was experience the joy of everyone else's hard work paying off, and honestly, I'm glad I didn't have any real prospects. Trust me, I'll never roll up into a golden demon without a serious contender ever again, but I'm really happy that I did it this one time. Because now, I can fully understand that feeling. The feeling of being so incredibly proud of other people in the midst of winning nothing. I'm a pretty jealous person and I know for a fact that if I tried my heart out and didn't win, I would have been so caught up in that emotion that I wouldn't have been able to experience the intense joy for the hobby and for others. My hope is that I can bottle up this experience and remember it year after year when I likely don't win because ultimately Golden Demon isn't the competition that measures the skill of painters against other painters. It's impossible to do that in a perfectly accurate way, so people will always feel disheartened and disillusioned like when I was staring at the flawless pieces from Robin McLeod. Are you kidding me, dude? I give up! To me, Golden Demon is validation for way too many hours spent painting miles that are unjustifiably small for that kind of time sink, but also a celebration of this beautiful community of painters. Honestly, it didn't really matter who won or lost. At the end of it all, everyone was just so happy and joyous, and that's what matters. Seriously, if I'm sitting in that award ceremony hall and I'm feeling bad for myself in 2023, come and remind me of that fact. But also, tell me that I should have won and tell me the ditches are on crack. Obviously. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna support the channel, consider subscribing. Or if you wanna support it monetarily, there are many ways you can do that. All things linked down in the description. Like a Discord channel that you can get access to through my Patreon, where we talk about all things miniature painting, such as what your next mini painting competition entry is gonna be. You can also support the channel by buying my model, The Duchess, and the digital course that teaches you how to paint the model like the box art, step by step. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to hit my minis!